What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being a loyal listener of the podcast. If you haven't already gotten my first book, Live Better Now, it's officially out on Amazon.com. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone that's already purchased the book, reviewed the book, or shared it with friends and family. It really, really means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much. Go ahead and visit Amazon.com and purchase Live Better Now. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hop on the Life Coach Zach podcast, the fact that we're doing this during trading hours. I don't know what I did to get you on the podcast during trading hours, but um, to all the people that are listening on Apple, on Spotify, Audible, maybe you're watching on YouTube, my guest today, Jeremy Newsom, author, advisor, investing guru, focuses on financial literacy and investing. Jeremy, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic, man. Doing really well. Uh, this is always an honor to pour into amazing people who are impacting the world, such as yourself. Love it, man. Thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. So uh, investing, financial literacy, uh, personal growth, self-development with money is something that I talk a lot about. And I'm very transparent with my money situation. I'm very transparent when it comes to what I do with my money and where I invest my dis- discretionary and disposable income. But let me hear your theory, your idea on where millennials and Gen Z should start. Okay. I can do that. So my answer to that is if you want to succeed, you must read. Same thing that you've done, Zach, right? You spent tons of time reading books and studying. When I asked my dad, I was 13 years old. I said, dad, what should I do with my life? One of those like conversations, you know, and my dad said, man, listen, son, go study money. But that was his advice. And so I didn't know exactly what that meant. So I started doing the best. What I thought was finding books with the word money in the title or things that related to money and just read them. So think and grow rich, richest man in Babylon, rich yeah. dad, poor dad. Like those were the thesis for me at age 13, 14, 15. And then I went on to get a uh, degree in uh, finance at the university of Florida. Amazing. Go Gators. I went to UF as well. Go Gators. Oh, Let's nice, go. dude. We're best friends now. <laughs> We're best friends. Let's go. So, you know, I have I have so many questions for you. Um, however, my audience, this, this is going to be a very surface level conversation, sure. right? We're not going to get into stock options. We're not going to talk about, you know, P&L or a- anything that has to do with... Um, speculative assets and things like that. We're going to talk about how sure. people can build wealth over time. And mm-hmm. I, and I know that's a very uh, elementary topic for you, but uh let's let's start there. So, when it comes to when it comes cuz you specialize in the stock market, correct? Right. All right, so let me ask you this. What's your outlook on today? Where are we heading from here? Well, from a longer macro perspective, I do think that we we ultimately obviously go higher, but a lot of millennials or younger individuals are going to have a phenomenal opportunity to take advantage of some companies that we are familiar with that are down massive. I'll give you some names. Sam Adams, down 74%. So, this, I mean, this is huge, right? Absolutely monstrous. Um, Scott's miracle Grow. People are very familiar with this company, right? This is a, a, a weed play slash alternative uh, weed sourcing type of investment. Um, Scott's Miracle Grow down 49%. Adobe down 44%. PayPal down 70%, right? PayPal owns Venmo, right? Which is a huge transactional tool for tons of millennials. So long story short, man, this is gonna be a great, great opportunity for people to start accumulating wealth. One of my favorite quotes is, concentrate to get rich, diversify to stay wealthy. So what we have to do is pick something, pick a lane and really attack it with ferociousness. doesn't matter if you're, if you study, if you're putting money into it, but pick a lane, stick to that lane for a period of time. It doesn't matter if it's sales, doesn't matter if it's insurance, get really good at your craft, pour a lot of time into it and then put some money behind it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great, great advice. And also um, to all the people that are listening, these stock pick, this is not financial advice. This is not financial advice. These are simply facts. This is where the stocks are at. But I want to, I want to uh, piggyback off of what you just said um, because Warren Buffett said the best hedge against inflation is, is a strong business. The mm. best hedge against inflation is having a valuable mm-hmm. skill set, 
right? Mm-hmm. Like if you bring mm-hmm. value to the world, if you bring value to your community, if you bring value to the marketplace, doesn't matter what industry it's in, if you have a valuable mm-hmm. skill, the recession's not going to hurt you. Inflation's not going to hurt you. What are your thoughts on wow. that, Jeremy? 100% agree. I mean, Warren Buffett's the goat. And uh, I mean, like you, for example, man, you make most of your money as a male model. And I'm sure everyone knows that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh, too funny. Love it. But but a, but a skill set though, man, it's imperative. And that skill set can be a very simple skill. It doesn't have to be anything yeah. that's crazy, but something that's very well-defined and poignant and targeted. For example, imagine if you're a comedian. You're just a really, like you were honing your craft. People pay for comedy shows all the time. If you want to become a chef, I mean, oh my gosh, you can get a job at any restaurant in the world right now because they need individuals who can really create culinary works of art. Right. You pick a good skill set and focus down on it and really concentrate on that skill set, recession won't matter. I totally agree. Okay. So for all the people now that want to live a a comfortable retirement, they're not thinking too much ahead in the future, but they want to retire and they want to retire comfortably. Now you, I've heard talking a lot about retiring on 3K and how to grow a modest investment into a comfortable retirement. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? 100%, 100%, man. So that ebook that's um, free and available on my website, essentially what it does, Zach, is it talks about how to, number one, leverage money because there are leveraged money capabilities out there. So for example, Real Life Trading, my company, we offer a program where someone can get access to $50,000 to day trade with for 500 bucks. And what they have to do is they have to prove themselves in a virtual simulated account. They make 10% return on that 50,000 and then it becomes real. And then we do a 75-25 split. I mean, that's that's the thought process of money truly does grow on trees. Like money is available. Most individuals feel that money is their biggest hurdle in life or it's their number one roadblock from success. But generally, money is the easiest part of the of the formula that you're trying to solve. It's available. You have to figure out what tree it's growing on and like you mentioned, how to provide the right value to transact it so that you can have that money come into your life. So this ebook is really about number one, focusing on a day trading skill, right? Coming up with a strategy that you repeat over and over and over and over again, taking leverage money so that you can only lose again, to be clear, you can only lose the amount of money that you invest Right, that 500 bucks. That's it. That's your max. You can't lose like your mortgage or your house because you're leveraging the money. You can only lose your investment. And with that approach being the case, you can slowly chip away at either student loans or credit card debt or car loans, or you can start stacking gains for a real estate investment. Um, You buy a condo, right? Three bedroom condo, rent out to the other bedrooms, live in one, live rent free, have more income coming into your life. It it starts to build accelerated. Yeah, it does. And you know, actually, I've I've seen a little bit of that too. I I've had a decent amount of disposable income over the last two, three, four years. And uh, I bought my house back in 2016. I took a huge risk, bought a house 2016, and ended up paying off paying off for me because the house is worth three times what I paid for it. And uh, I rent it out when I go out of town. And I've been, I've been buying stocks for the last couple years. Most of them are up pretty big. Been stacking Bitcoin, you know, doing that, you know. So I mean. You're absolutely right, and and it does take time. But leverage is something that is a it's a creative angle, creative angle, right? That you know, some people like the Grant Cardones of the world. They're very radical in the sense that you know, why would you pay any money down? I'm going to buy this you know 164 uh, door apartment complex with zero money down, and then I'm going to refi it in five years. Then there's the people like Dave Ramsey. Okay, there's the people like Dave Ramsey. Mm-hmm. Cash is king. Let's live debt free. Yep. Only buy you know a house if you can afford a fifteen year fixed rate mortgage and your payments less than forty percent of your take home pay. Only buy a car if you can pay for it in cash. Um, don't use any credit cards, right? He does. Dave Ramsey doesn't care mm-hmm. about getting three three percent cash back on his groceries. He cares about you know not owing money to a bank. Where do you stand, Jeremy? Where do you stand now? Now, obviously, depends on your net worth. You know, leveraging money when you're worth seven, eight figures is obviously the way to go because you can lend against your brokerage account and stuff like this. But we're talking to, you know, the four or 500 listeners today that, you know, might be living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe they got 10, 20,000 in the bank. You know, they got 500 a month of discretionary income, which I think is like most people in the world, 
right? Mm-hmm. What, what, are, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts mm-hmm. on the, the Grant Cardone leverage versus the Dave Ramsey cash is king? Dang, man, that's a good question. Holy smokes. I love your questions, number one. I love your preparation. I love your professionalism. You're a badass, Zach, but you already knew that. Um, my, state, my take on that is education is empowerment. You have to study this information to see which one applies more consistently with your soul. Because one thing I can say without question is you can make more money, but you can always spend more than you make unless you are essentially a Warren Buffett, right? You're going to be able to spend more than you make for a very, very, very long period of time. Therefore, budgeting is key. You absolutely need to know the metrics. You need to be able to have more income than you have expenses for sure without question. But the truth is, man, if you have internet, you have income, right? You have capabilities for income, especially in 2022 and beyond, because we are going towards an age where the entire globe with, uh, with satellite internet technology you know, is going to be like Starlink is going to be phenomenal opportunity growth in so many countries that might not have direct access and capabilities as easily as America. So for me and for my, my opinion, to really answer your question on that, I think if you are a base starting $20,000 in a bank, four or $500 extra of discretionary income, you need to focus on increasing your skill sets. Right. Increasing right? your income. He, he, yeah. Dude, like if you're an Uber driver, how can you become a better Uber driver? Right. If you're a teacher, how can you become a better teacher? How can you teach more individuals at, at scale? Yeah. How, can you, how can you focus on individuals who have more discretionary income coach their kids, teach their kids, work with them, really amplify their skills, and then go give back to the community or go give back to certain schools or certain individuals in the classroom. The approach is at the base level where you're at, increase your skills. Keep your money exactly where it is. Don't do anything interesting or different with your money, but increase your skill set and thusly your income. Add more value to the world. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. And And it literally circles back right around to what Warren Buffett said. You know, it's like, and it, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter what, what the recession is. It doesn't matter what the stock market, market is. Like if you have a valuable skill set that you're bringing to the world, that you're bringing to the market, you know, you're going to be fine. So, okay, great. So, you know, cause I'm honestly, dude, like I'm a big Grant Cardone fan, but I'm also a big Dave Ramsey fan. And I was actually on Dave Ramsey's podcast, uh, two weeks ago. Um, and long story short, I said, look, I bought a Tesla two years ago. Um, I owe 42 grand on it. I have the cash to pay it off. Should I pay it off? And, and, and his host, it wasn't Dave Ramsey. His host says, pay it off. Absolutely. I said, okay, but wait, let me ask you. Right. Exactly. I said, wait, let me ask you a question. If I took that $42,000 and I put it in SPY or QQQ or some mutual fund or ETF, and I get just 6%, just six. For the next 30 years, that's going to be $240,000. If I get 8% on $42,000 invested Mm -hmm. today, Mm -hmm. I'm going to have $500,000. If I get 10%, (laughs) this is what I'm saying to him on his podcast. I said, if I get 10% on that $42,000 that you're telling me to throw at my car right now, I'm going to have $750,000. What should I do? He says, pay off the car. And I hung up on him. I said, you are giving terrible advice. I, that is terrible advice. I do agree, especially if you can pay for it with your just normal month to month income, right? If you have a job where you can you can pay your car off on a monthly basis and it's not stressing you out and you like it and it's low interest rate. I mean, most Teslas right now, even if you have an okay credit score, you're paying three to half, three and a half, four percent interest. Because I'll really you this, man, with, with the right education and with the right knowledge, imagine you mentioned $42,000 is how much you owe. Imagine you take $2,000, Zach, and you buy into... A funded account for two hundred thousand dollars because I offer that. Okay. All right. So just imagine this: you take two thousand dollars, you invest into a two hundred thousand dollars funded account. With this two hundred thousand dollars funded account, you're risking let's just say half a percent, half a percent of two hundred thousand, which is a thousand bucks. And you make out of that half a percent, you make four percent a month. That's four thousand dollars a month off of two hundred thousand dollars. That's forty eight thousand dollars a year with a two thousand dollar investment. So when we're talking, I mean, things can start getting really silly when you do study the approach of simple second grade math. Because what I'm what I'm preaching is not, hey, you can make millions by next Thursday. What I am preaching is if you create the proper streams of education and knowledge with, with the internet, you will not only have financial 
literacy, you will have financial liberty. And that freedom gives you the knowledge to create different alternate worlds that help you build wealth exponentially quicker than normal people. Yeah. Now, there's another thing I wanted to talk about that you love, love this topic is, is knowing the difference between fear and greed. Knowing the difference between fear and greed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What does that mean and what's that referring to? All right, Zach. So here's the thing, man. I'll ask you a personal question. You make $200,000 from whatever, a sale, a marketing, a whatever, a, a creation, a product that you made. You make $200,000 with that money. Would you give any away to friends, to charity, to help someone, someone else other I than would. yourself? Which means you're not greedy. Okay. Inherently. Right. Inherently, because greed is a state of the soul. It is an unquenchable thirst for gains. The reason I'm bringing it up is because this is a subconscious barrier that will hold a lot of people back from making a lot of money because they believe subconsciously that if you make more money, eventually you will become greedy. Money expands whatever it touches. So if you do have a lot of fear internally about making more money, if you make more money, you will become more afraid. Money expands everything that it touches. So what we need to do is start working on our internal composition of, all right, I'm not actually greedy because if I make $100,000, $200,000, million, I will give a lot of this away to charities, to organizations, to nonprofits, to people and companies that I believe in. If you are circulating money through your family or through other organizations, you are not greedy by definition because a greedy person will keep all the money to themselves. That's a very big distinction because if I t- if I can release someone from the chains and the impression of feeling Im- impoverished through greed, if that removes, then you have a full humongous ceiling to chase after because you have tons and tons of room to go get as much right. money as you can. I like that thought. Yeah, however you are today is how you're going to be with money. It, like mm-hmm. it, you know, yeah. me being worth, let's say I'm worth half a million dollars. If I'm worth five million dollars, I'm going to be exactly the same way, right? I'm still going to put twenty five percent in the stock market. I'm going to give away ten percent. I'm going to use twenty five percent for my bills, you know, regardless of how much money I have. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So where are you at? What are your um? What's something that you're trying to get better at with money? Obviously, you've had proven success. You know, you're results oriented. You're driven. You're very specific with your goals. But what's something that you're still trying to figure out? How to get hair like you. That's step one. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, it's not easy. <laughs> not easy, bro. Um, so the true answer is passive income. Now, I love Gary Vaynerchuk's, uh, I, I love Gary Vaynerchuk's explain, explanation of this. He's like, hey, dude, there's nothing passive in the world about income. It's like, well, kind of. There are some things that can be extremely passive. It's called a dividend. Yeah, that's, that's one. Yeah, absolutely. That is one. That's passive. Come on. That is very passive. That is passive. Very passive. Dividends are extremely passive and they're a phenomenal, phenomenal tool uh, for wealth creation without question. Um, but there are other there are other ways, right? There are other ways to get passive income. And I'm not talking about semi-passive. I'm talking about legitimate passive streams of income. So for example, uh, I work and partnered with a company that helped build a trading robot. So when you talk about me being, you know, here during market hours, although I am, I have a trading robot that's going on in the background that is either up or down. I haven't checked. I don't look at it very often, but over the last week and a half, it's made about eight grand passively. I've done absolutely nothing. Zero. No time at all. Zero time. And it's made $8,000. There are ways and this is actively trading stocks, by the way. This is not like a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme. Like this is, I took money, sixty-seven thousand dollars, at the beginning of the year, put it into this robot. It trades stocks both long and short, and right now it's worth ninety-seven thousand dollars. That, that's the money that's in that account presently. So, for me, focusing on strictly entirely passive income, either be multifamily projects, um, syndications of some kind, other t- other streams of investments, where. I collect money from individuals and put it into a really beautiful asset like bourbon barrels or an apartment complex or condominium project. Being able to do that and create money passively, that is what I am focusing on for my money for the next four or five years to become even better at it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Because so far in my career, I think it's done a lot of what what, what you've done. I've done a lot of that is hustle. 
I've outworked everybody, yeah. right? I've put yeah. in 18 hours a day, like an absolute savage for the last nine years. And my work ethic has been ridiculous. So now I'm trying to go, okay, now I have a, a wife and a kid. I'm trying to level back the time that I spend on actual work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Passive income. I'm trying to do the same. I'm actually about to launch my first book. There you go. And you know, I, it's, it's yeah, thank you, man. It's look, it's not going to make me a millionaire. You know, I'm hoping to sell 500,000 copies, but that book is going to live on Amazon forever. So whether I make, whether I make 25 bucks this month and 25 bucks, 30 years from now this month, it's still, it's like, and the podcast, for example, you know, I'm making $11 per 1000 streams. Yep. And you know, I could not post another podcast and people could still be listening to the you know, so Chip it's not a lot of money, but that that passive that passive income yeah. is is something that that I'm after too. Totally, like, man. Yeah. Well, you you are you're doing it the right way. You're thinking about it the right way because that was a yeah. a term I didn't believe in not that long ago. I thought it was only active income or semi-passive income. I didn't fully focus entirely on passive income. So I love that you're doing that, man. That's incredible. Love it. All right, man. I'm gonna. We got a, a minute or two left. I know you're super busy. Yeah. I want to get your uh, a quick advice from you. I'm gonna be very transparent about my money situation right now to my followers. Okay, I'll be real transparent right now. I got nothing to hide. So, um, <clears throat> I got this house that's worth over two hundred thousand. It's paid off. I got no mortgage, which is great. I, you know, if I don't want to work today, I'm not gonna work today, right? Because my bills are kind of low. But this is the thing. I got my real estate. I got over six figures in the stock market. I got a decent amount of Bitcoin, right? And uh, I got some cash in the bank. And this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing a thousand bucks a month in the stock market. I'm doing 50 bucks a week, specifically in SPY. I'm doing 40 bucks a week of Bitcoin, 20 bucks a week of Ethereum. So a thousand in the brokerage. Oh, and I'm doing uh, 500 a month in the SEP. So a thousand in the brokerage, 500 in the SEP. 40 bucks a week in Robinhood and SPY, 40 bucks of Bitcoin, 20 bucks of Ether. And then the rest of the money, if it's not going there, I'm spending it. And I am spending all of it. That's what I'm doing. And I'm pl I plan on doing that for the next 30 years. And I have unwavering conviction, my man, unwavering conviction that if I do that for the next 30 years, God willing, I'm still alive. Because that's the most yeah, money. Fuck money. It's about health. It's about being alive for our kids, for our wife, for our family, right? So, God willing that I'm alive 30 years from now, I think I'm going to be a pretty rich man. But I want to get your advice. I want to get your opinion. I want all the feedback. Don't hold back. You are already rich. That's the first takeaway. <laughs> You've already made it, my man. And I feel that way. Yeah, you're already rich. So what's beautiful is at this stage is creating a vision that you are led by rather than pushed by. Because most people are pushed by their problems. Now it's time to get pulled by your dreams. Find a conviction and a purpose that you can pour time into that is so convicting and so fulfilling and so exciting and liberating that you want to attract even more money and you want to propel what you have to really pour into it. So let's do, what, what state do you live in, Zach? I forgot. I live in Palm Beach, Florida. Heck yeah, dude. I love Florida. I, yeah, okay. So again, I grew up in Gainesville. So imagine you found a city that's nearest you. And let's say they have a homeless population of 20 people. If you go, okay, I'm going to figure out a way to end homelessness in that city by building small, biz, uh, small homes in a particular location. I'm going to get some funding. I'm going to put $50,000 behind it and try to go raise $500,000 from 20, 30, 40 people. And I'll go do this and I'll go build small housing in this community. That's a, that's a purpose, right? That's a, that's a give back. And what that will do is it will fuel you and it'll fuel your brain to try to figure out ways to grow even wealthier because you're starting young. You're amazing at what you do. You have incredible talent. You have phenomenal work ethic. You're already rich. You're already there for your age. And for our age, we're already in the top 1% of the world. So now it's about what can you do with the money? Because Warren Buffett gave more money away than every president in history combined. All right. So our go I got our guy WB keeps giving money away, but keeps getting richer because that's the law of the universe. The more you give, the, the more law you of the receive. universe. Uh-huh. So I'm excited about seeing what I'm, you I'm excited about seeing what you do, man. It's gonna be incredible. I appreciate it. You're right. What you give, you receive. 
What you yeah. put out there, you get back. We live in abundance, man. We don't live in scarcity. Shit, you could take all my money. You could take all your money. That brokerage account says this. It's a fucking egg. It's an <laughs> egg. And you will get it all back, my man. You will get it all back. Yeah. That's the mindset. That's the mentality. Uh, not just about money, about fitness, about reaching your goals, about life, relationships. You could lose it all and you'll get it all back. Jeremy, it was a absolute pleasure having you on the podcast today. To all the people that are still listening on Spotify, uh, Apple, Audible, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for sticking around to the end. You can follow Jeremy on Instagram at Jeremy Newsom. That's J E R R. E-M-Y-N-E-W-S-O-M-E. You can head over to jeremynewsome.com, get, get clicked in with him uh, when it comes to trading stocks, options, things like that. Learn from him. Um, Jeremy, is there anything else that I left out that you wanted to drop? Nah, oh, dude, you're the coolest thing in the world, man. You talked about books earlier. I have two. I'd love for your listeners to check them out. Uh, oh, Money, Gr- Money Grows on Trees is the name of my best-selling book. And then the one I just released is called A Stock Market Journey, How to Make Sure Young Adults Win in Real Life. It's a kid's book for the stock market. So just like you, I want to create financial literacy for younger adults and get some information in their hands. It's r- imperative that we teach the kids of the world because when a child has education, the world has education. Love it. I'm going to have to get that one for my little brother. He's 18. He could use some, uh, man, you're so cool. Although he, you know what he did though? Last thing when, uh, when he turned 13, he had his bar mitzvah and, uh, he, he got into uh, like, like a little over five figures from everybody. And, and he, he hammered Netflix in 2013. Doesn't Good for him. Nice. Yeah, he's a, yeah he's up crazy. 500, 600, 700. I mean, it kind of it obviously now it's kind of lost yeah. a lot. But um, you know, Facebook. I mean, listen, any stock that you bought before 2017 is ripping, right? right. Let's be real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But let's just keep stacking. Let's keep stacking. And <laughs> and I'm following the Warren Buffett mentality. It's never selling. I, I learned my mistake. I've sold shit that that went up 10x since I've sold it. I'm not selling anything anymore for the rest of my life. Buy good stuff and keep holding it, man. I like the plan. That's it, brother. All right, Jeremy. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.